Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science on this seventh night of Hanukkah. Uh, you've joined us for our pre-service meditation. So for the next 10 minutes, we're gonna take this opportunity to just get still. So I invite you to make sure you are seated in a way that is comfortable, but that your spine is still erect, that you won't have a tendency to nod off. And close your eyes. Take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. Breathing in, breathing out. And so now for the next 10 minutes, we're gonna use the breath as an object of focus to bring our attention into the present moment, to turn away from the distractions of thinking about the past, projecting into the future, just being in the now, watching each breath. And if you wish, it may help to maintain that focus by silently saying to yourself, breathing in, with the in-breath, breathing out with the out-breath. And if the mind wanders off, which it has a tendency to do, it's perfectly normal. This is an opportunity to cultivate that part of us that can simply observe. Observe what our mind is doing noticing and maybe labeling the activity of the mind as thinking, hearing, feeling. Just notice that for a moment and then let that thought pattern just dissolve as you bring your awareness gently and compassionately back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
right, so we bring this meditation to a close. I invite you to become aware of your bodies, of the weight of your body in the chair, whatever you're sitting on right now. Maybe wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers a little. Take a nice deep breath, and as you feel ready, open your eyes. <clears throat> So, for those of you who joined us after we started the meditation, welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you're able to join us for our seventh night of Hanukkah here, and we will begin our service with our opening chant led by the wonderful Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. Indeed, God is in this place. So before we move into our invocation, we're going to light the menorah. It is well after sundown, so it is certainly time for the menorah to be lit. So I'll go ahead and light that, and then we can join together in saying the Hanukkah blessing. So, if you'd like to join me in saying the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lehadlik Ner Shel Chanukah. And so, from this place, let's join together in consciousness. Absolutely feeling that inner light, that light of the menorah that lies within each and every one of us, that light of God that is the one life, the one power, the one infinite, invisible, out of which all things come into being. I know that that light is the very light that animates my being. It is the light, the love, the power that animates everything in creation, including each and every one of us gathered, whether it's virtually or here in the sanctuary for the few that are here. We are all emanations of this love and light of God. I know it lives through and as each and every one of us, and I know that as we come together 
this evening for this special service that we awaken to that light, we become aware of it as our true nature, and that every part of this service supports that intention. I know we feel the vibration of God's love as the love that we can feel even when we're not in the same place. I know we feel it as the love of the volunteers, everyone who's of service this evening. I know we feel it and are inspired by it through our music and our musician Sam and our soloist Margaret. And I open myself to being a vessel through which the word of God is spoken. And so I know that the message that comes through is one that I too have come to hear this evening, to awaken to that light and that love and to experience it more fully in my life as we all get to experience it in all our lives. And so I give thanks for the blessings that we receive and in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is absolutely so in the mind of God. I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so I invite you now to please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. message of love, what a child, what a night. Oh, the angels did sing, all oh, the gifts they did bring, all oh, to welcome the birth of the light here on earth, what a child, what a night. It was the promise of a new day, and the light within all it brought the making of a new way glad some tidings can't you hear the angels call what a child what a night what a star what a light brought a heavenly spark to light up the dark what a child what a night take it sam Turn in, cause it is child, don't you know? Don't you feel the embers burning? Set within you there to put your heart aglow. What a child, what a night! What a star, what a light! Show from heaven above with a message of love. What a child, what a night! All to welcome the birth of the light here on earth. What a child, what a night. It brought a heavenly spark to light up the dark. What a child, what a night. Show from heaven above with a message of love. What a child, what a night. Amen, Margaret. Thank you so much. We knew you could light up the sanctuary as always. So I just have to ask because I don't want to, to distract me throughout. I thought about this where I said, did I miss a word in the blessing? No. 
No? Okay. Afterwards, I said, did I say Vitsivanu? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> After practicing, ah, oh dear, the things that are, the places our mind will go. <laughs> okay, well, welcome to this seventh night of Hanukkah. I love exploring this Hanukkah story because I think it has such significance to us today. So in case, in case uh, you're not familiar with the story, then uh, we should probably make sure you know it so that you'll understand what we're talking about this evening. So this goes back to a time about 2,200 years ago when Judea, Judea was under Greco-Syrian rule and the Jewish people were forbidden from praying to their God and practicing their customs. They were forced to worship Greek gods instead. And the holy temple of Jerusalem, the holiest of temples, the, one of the most sacred symbols in Judaism, was desecrated. Pigs were sacrificed at the altar. If you know about Judaism, that is not kosher. Uh, the idol of Zeus was placed in the temple. And so after a period of time, Judah Maccabee and his four brothers formed a group of resistance fighters known as the Maccabees, who succeeded in driving the Greco-Syrians out of Judea. The Maccabees reclaimed the holy temple of Jerusalem. They cleaned it up so they had to remove the idols that were placed by the Greco-Syrians, the statue of Zeus, uh, and they built a new altar. And then when it came time to dedicate the temple, the word Hanukkah means dedication. So when it was time to dedicate the temple by lighting the menorah, they discovered that the Greco-Syrians had defiled the oil that they would use to keep the menorah burning. And there was only enough purified oil for the flame to burn for one day, and it would take an additional week to uh, produce more purified oil. But they went ahead. They decided they were dedicated to this. They went ahead and dedicated the temple by lighting the menorah, and that's when the miracle occurred. The menorah burned for not one, but for eight days. And by that time, the new purified oil was ready, which is why this is known as the miracle of the lights. Now, in Signs of Mind, we interpret scripture or any stories from scripture uh, metaphysically, meaning we're not really just looking at them literally or uh, in the way of, okay, here's what happened 2,200 years ago. We look at the different characters, the themes of the story as things that exist within us, within our consciousness. So let's look at what we're dealing with in this story as far as the themes. You've got one group of people, the Greco-Syrians, telling another, the Jewish people, you have to conform to our ways. This is the way you have to be in the world. Ours is the right way, and you have to follow our ways. No choice. The oppressed people, the Jewish people, go along with it for a while because, well, quite frankly, they don't want to experience the consequences of not doing so, which might well be death. Can't blame them, personally. Um, but gradually, those who have been told to conform, the Jewish people, start to feel this discomfort of having to fit in to others' ways to the point that at a certain point they just say, no, we're not going along with this anymore. There's no reason for us to go along with us. It's, it's not right. They're coming from a place of our ways may be different, but they're not wrong. Conforming actually feels wrong. Conforming feels inauthentic. We need to take back our temple and practice according to our ways. 
I think there's an important point to recognize in this story. You know, we have any times in human history where you'll have two groups of people fighting, one trying to make the other conform to their ways. This isn't about that. There's one group forcing another to conform, and the other group saying, we don't have to be like you. You go ahead and be who you are, do things your way. We're not saying you have to convert to our way of doing things. We're just saying you need to let us be who we are. Let us follow our paths. When the oppressed uh, conquer their oppressors, so when the Jewish people, the Maccabees, managed to drive the Greco-Syrians out, there's some cleanup to do afterwards, right? They have to get rid of the traces of the damage done by their oppressors. We'll get to the significance of that. And then, when all is back in order, when everything is back to looking the way it needs to be. This is the moment. This is about to say, OK, we are stepping into our authentic expression of who we are. There's this idea that, oh, we don't have enough to keep this flame going. But we're, we're going to dedicate ourselves to this anyway. And when they do that, the flame continues to burn for the period of time until they can you know, uh, replenish the purified oil. Haven't we all faced some version of feeling that we are being forced to conform to something that feels inauthentic? But if we don't, others might not approve. Oh my gosh, others may just actually not have a high opinion of us if we choose to be di a different way than the way they want us to be. We might lose respect or admiration. We might lose their friendship or their love, perhaps be cut off by fam family and loved ones, ostracized. Maybe we'll actually get fired from that job. It could be you know, any number of things that cause us to, for a period of time, just go along with the expectations of others, with what others are telling us we should be. So we conform. But then we face the consequence of feeling unfulfilled in being the unique expressions of God that God seeks to be through us. Something in us just doesn't feel right. It feels inauthentic. We feel stifled. So there's this inner battle and struggle that goes on within us to build up the courage to be more authentic, to say, this is who I really am, whether you like it or not. You know that this is the way I believe God seeks to express through me. Now. Just a little caveat here. I think this is where the human struggle with this could get even more complicated, is because sometimes the inner battle that goes on is to determine if when we're saying we don't want to conform, if it's the ego talking, or if we're really feeling the calling of our divine nature to not give in to others' ideas or expectations of us. Sometimes others have expectations of us that actually encourage us to step into a greater expression of that nature of God that lies within all of us. Sometimes you know, others are asking of us to be more loving, more kind, more compassionate, more generous, to take better care of ourselves, to be more nurturing of ourselves, to believe more in ourselves. And you know, the ego, the ego doesn't like change. The ego likes things to just stay the way they are. And so even when that quote unquote conformity, what others are expecting of us, 
would actually be for greater expression of that divine nature in us, there's a part of us that might resist us. So the ego goes, no, no, I don't want to. This is just who I am. Have we ever found ourselves saying that? Okay, so this is not about that. This story is not about that. I think when we're trying to decipher, okay, is this just my ego not wanting to conform, or is it really something in me that's saying, this isn't who you're intended to be? You know, Ernest Holmes, our founder, gave us a great way to look at this and to ask ourselves if the good that we're seeking, if the way we are seeking to be is for a greater, fuller experience of life, that it brings us more peace and happiness without doing any harm to anyone else, then it's good. We should go for it. That's what God seeks to experience and express through all of us. So we do our spiritual practices to get still and determine if we're being called to be more of who we can be as spiritual beings. And when we realize that our authentic expression of spirit doesn't fit into others' demands, well, that's when we do the spiritual work. That's when we do our prayer. We spend time in meditation, getting still with that presence within us to really feel his presence, to pull it forward so that we can have a greater sense of it to move forward. You know, we do our prayers and affirmations. We go to our counselors, our practitioners, if we need to, for support. But we build the consciousness. That's the part of the story that would be the Maccabees building the resistance uh, group to uh, fight against the Greco-Syrians. And eventually, that work in consciousness pushes us through our fears, our insecurities, so that now we're, we're at that point where we've said, OK, no, this is who I really am. So up to now, this is the story of every example in human history where people have stepped out of the norm of what was expected of them based on their gender, their race, their age, their socioeconomic circumstances, their education, their sexual orientation, their gender identity that they were born with when they are willing to say this, I'm not buying into the idea that this is the way I'm supposed to be based on that. I'm not willing to say that these things limit me. Every progress that we've seen for greater equality, every example we've seen of someone just saying, I know this isn't what you want of me, but this is who I really am, and they step into that, and they turn, they, they give the world the best that they have to give. That's what this story is about. It's about that voice that says, I won't be limited by what others, my society, my culture, my family, friends, colleagues, expect of me if it doesn't support me absolutely aligning with and giving the best, that, that nature of God in my own unique way. So there's this time where, OK, we've stepped into this idea of, OK, this is who I am. So we're in this new place in consciousness. We've reclaimed our temple. But often, there's a lot of residual feelings that we have of anger, hurt, resentment for those who didn't support us, or resentment of how unfair life was that you know we had to go through that. And yes, maybe it feels like life was unfair. Yes, maybe others were harsh or unsupportive, unkind, abusive, whatever. But the point is, we got past that. We grew from that. It's time to let go of the past and to stop rehashing it and reliving it and giving away our power to it. Because when we're in that place of rehashing and resenting and all that, we're still living in the past. 
and we're giving our power away and we're not experiencing or expressing the best that we have to give. So that's the part of the story that's the cleaning of the temple. That's the work that we do to forgive, to just say, okay, that's where others were in consciousness. They didn't get who I am. I need to get who I am. I understand that this is what I'm here to be and do in the world. And I'm dedicating myself to that. Whatever it is, either they'll at some point align and support or maybe not. But that's not my business. My business is to tap into that divine potential and express it to the greatest degree that I possibly can. So, okay, now we've done all that work in consciousness and we're ready to forgive to give up our resentments, to stop whining about the past. But we're still, we're still stepping into new territory. Even though this is something we felt called to do, maybe from the, when we were born, who knows? But whenever we got that idea that this is who I seek to be, the way I seek to be in the world, it still feels new and uncomfortable. And so we may still have those feelings of, oh, am I really enough? And that's that point of dedicating, of just saying, I fully accept that this is who I am, this is what I'm tended to do. I dedicate myself to this greater expression of God in me. And that's when we'll discover that that inner light, that essence of God's nature in us is inexhaustible eternal, sometimes we lose sight of it, but it can never be extinguished and it will shine forever. And so I'm going to invite you to turn your attention inward. And call to mind any area in your life where you feel stifled, where you feel you have to conform to others' demands or expectations, that feels authentic, that constricts your flow of joy, of love, of creativity. And imagine yourself being free of those constrictions, expressing life to the fullest. Imagine you answering the calling of your soul to step into that greater experience and expression of an authentic you. And notice that part of you can feel the greater love or joy or abundance, creativity or whatever aspect of God's nature that would be more fully expressed. And that's because this is the eternal essence that part of you that can be, never be extinguished or denied, that already lies within you. It's just seeking to be shown in a way that is never shown before. And know that this inner light of God moves you past your fears, past the need to conform into your more authentic experience and expression of life. Feel it releasing you, absolutely releasing you of any resentments or hurts so you can be your most joyful, abundant, loving, authentic self and in dedicating yourself to God in this way, that eternal essence of God's nature in you has been ignited. And so, once again, I say, Baruch Hata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lehadlik Ner Shel Chanukah. And so let us join together right now 
knowing that truth of the light of God that lives in all beings everywhere, that it is the essence of who each and every one of us is, the essence of who we are, and that shines through every part of creation. And as we know that we are all expressions of God, let us know this truth about some of the human challenges that people face along this journey of life. For those who are feeling any sense of unsettledness due to change, and sometimes the changes are dramatic, we know that things in the, er, on this earthly plane are always changing, that nothing is eternal, including our human life expression, and yet that eternal life of the divine that lives through and has us is eternal. It existed before we came into this human expression. We continue to live on beyond this human expression, and we stay interconnected in this one life of God. And at any change that feels unsettling, that there is this essence of God that we can always turn to, to experience the good that we feel has left us in some new way. Let us know together that this light of God is perfect, whole, complete. It is a light of health and wholeness. And it is there right now to reveal the pathway of healing of any human dis-ease or discord, including this pandemic right now, that in God there's always and eternally this light that can heal everything. And it is coming forth. Let us know that this essence of God, this light is a creative energy that is always seeking to give of itself in unique ways through us. And as we open to it, it guides us to the perfect right ways and places to give of our unique talents where we are loved and appreciated. Let us remember that this nature of God is infinite. And so where there's any experience of lack or limitation, as we know the truth of God's nature, that, that light of God shines in those dark places to reveal a greater abundance, a capacity to give and receive in greater ways. And let us know that the core nature of this divine essence is love. And as we remember that truth right here, right now, there is an opening to a greater sense of self-love and love of others, no matter how different they may seem from us. And so knowing that the nature of love is for greater good, let us absolutely set our intentions in silence for greater good. And so whatever this greater good may be, if it's greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us know that God is right there at the center of all these situations, just the very desire we feel for greater good to come forth is that essence of God's light that is right there. And as we know that truth, good comes forward. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And so it's with a heart filled with gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Spirit of my life and my heart.
Amen again. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. So this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Uh, you should be seeing a link if, uh, coming up right now if you'd like to make a donation online. Um, if you're not seeing it, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that'll take you straight to our donation page. Um, you can also call into the church office after the service at 818 762-7566, and uh, we'll be there for about 30 minutes after service to take your donation over the phone via credit card or debit card. And uh, also, you can text your donation, if you prefer to give that way, to 818-457-3419. Just text the word GIVE to that number. And of course, you can send your checks in if uh, you prefer giving that way. However you are making your donations, let me just say once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. We love that you continue to support us so we can continue to be there to support you. So with that, feeling our intentions of the good that we're doing as we give, let us hold our hands to our hearts and say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Margaret. Well, as we bring our service to a close, um, just want to begin by thanking everyone who's been of service this evening. Let me start by the folks here in the sanctuary. Thank you so much, Adam, for once again making sure we're seen and heard up here. Thank you to Blair, Doreen, and Brenda for the technical assistance, the camera work, and to our wonderful Sam and our diva this evening, <laughs> Margaret, thank you so much. Really beautiful, beautiful, I loved your solo. Your own composition, of course, yes, yes, she's amazing. Uh, I want to thank those who are supporting us out there in virtual land. Uh, thank you to Liz Racy, practitioner, who's holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, to the folks on Zoom, Lynn Romanowski, Alma Alvarez, and Ray Regan. 
thank you, thank you for your support. And once again, to Melissa Allen for the support on Facebook Live. And I'm just going to say a special thank you, I don't even know if she's tuned in, to my Israeli friend Tally for the coaching. Uh, sorry if for a moment there I thought I'd left something out, but thank you. Uh, enjoyed the experience of practice. <laughs> and so, a um, few announcements. We will have, um, as I said earlier, the opportunity, if you'd like to call into the church, uh, 818-762-7566 to make a donation over the phone via credit or debit card. You can, of course, still make your payments online at hcrs.org forward slash give. You can text the word give to area code 818-457-3419 and you can certainly mail your checks in. Prayer with a Practitioner is available via Zoom immediately after the service, so you can be put in a uh, private breakout room with a practitioner for prayer. If you'd like to submit a prayer request, please send an email to prayer at nhcrs.org, or you can call into the church office, and option four on the menu allows you to leave a voice message as to what your prayer request is, and we collect those prayer requests we check the uh, voicemail and email address every evening, so they're sent out to all of our practitioners. So you'll have a large group of people supporting you in prayer. So please take advantage of that if there's any area in your life or for others that you would like to request prayer. Please be aware there's no Wednesday evening service next Wednesday. Uh, we have a special service for you on the 30th, but you'll learn more about that later. But Next Wednesday, no Wednesday, no Wednesday evening service, December 23rd, uh, since we'll be having Christmas Eve candle lighting services the next evening. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. We will have a Course in Miracles uh, tomorrow evening with our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte. That's going to be from 7.15 to 9.15. And uh, this is really an inspirational class you don't have, you know, it's okay if you haven't attended prior classes, you can join at any time. So, um, again, tomorrow evening, 7.15 to 9.15, our Journey of the Heart 2021 campaign. We're really excited to still be in this process of a Journey of the Heart campaign where you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash journey, and you'll be able to fill out a pledge form to let us know how you feel you can support the church next year. Um, you know, and you can also still access the recording of the incredible concert that Karen Drucker did for us, uh, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. It was just an amazing experience. And so you can be part of that whole pledge campaign. And you know, we just really thank you for considering what the church means to you how you can support it, and helping to make 2021 our best year ever. We continue to have a blanket drive for the homeless. Uh, we're collecting new and clean used blankets for the homeless. Uh, distribution will be on December 20th, 26th, and 27th. And of course, you can go to our website for more details. The big point I want to let you know is please, if you're going to bring the blankets to the church, call to make sure we're here and let the person know when you're coming and have a cell phone so you can call from the gate since the gates are closed. Now, Christmas Eve candlelight service on Zoom and Facebook Live. That would be on December 24th. It'll be at 7 p.m. So we're inviting you to join us for an all new Christmas Eve service. It'll include beautiful reading, singing, and of course, the traditional element of candle lighting. However, this year it's BYOC, bring your own candle, because we can't all go out <laughs> to your place to deliver them. Uh, so be prepared to have a candle, and we really look forward to having you join us for that. Please know that in-person attendance has been suspended. At this time, we were having limited attendance on the patio. Uh, this has been suspended. Um, I'm sure you know the reasons with the pandemic. 
and uh, Zoom virtual patio. We still have that possibility to join with your fellow congregants 20 minutes before or after service. Um, so, you know, those of you who join us by Zoom can still visit both for the Sunday and Wednesday services. Our men's group continues to meet from 11 to 11.30 uh, on Sundays, and all men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8.15. And all the information on how to get to these events virtually is on our website, one more time, nhcrs.org. Go there and you can find the links to join us virtually. Um, and also, if you're not getting our weekly um, emails and monthly newsletters, you can go to the website to sign up for those. With that, thank you, thank you, thank you again for joining us this evening. I believe the word is toda. Tally told me. <laughs> so uh, thank you for being here. Let's turn within one more time. And so once again, how grateful I am for all the ways that that light, that love, that essence of the divine has made itself felt and known and realized to us and through us this evening. I know absolutely that we are blessed and uplifted by this experience of coming together in consciousness. I know that we carry that idea of the miracle of the light that is eternally burning within us. We carry it out into our lives. It ripples out and blesses others and continues to expand. And so I give thanks for the blessings we've received and how they multiply as we go forward. And in deep gratitude, I release this word knowing in the mind of God it's already so. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. So let's join one more time in song. Yeah.